All right, Shalom. We give praise to the Most High, the Creator of heaven and earth. We give all honor and glory to the Most High. And we come in the spirit of His Son, Yahweh our Lord and Savior and our King. Um, today we're going to touch on the subject of how to keep the Sabbath. It doesn't need much of an introduction, so we're going to get right into it. I'm Brother Yerashua. This is the Bible Unlocked, How to Keep the Sabbath. Exodus chapter 31, verse 16. Wherefore, the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations for a perpetual covenant. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. So I want to start off with this verse just in case people forgot the thought that we are to keep the Sabbath. It is a sign between the Most High and the children of Israel, which are the so-called Negroes, Hispanics, Native Indians, and various people of color suffering the curses written in Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. So it is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. So there's no such thing as Sunday worship in the Bible. So the Sabbath day is what we must keep. So this is the reminder to give people the idea and allow them that, to know that the Sabbath is something we're supposed to be keeping. Exodus 31 verse 15. Six days may work be done, but in the seventh is the Sabbath of rest, holy to the Lord. The Most High says six days may work be done. I mean, six days is what the Most High gave us to do all the work necessary in order to earn an income. Six days is what the Most High gave us for all the labor and work we want to do for hobby. That's what the Most High gave us. But the seventh day, which is the Sabbath, Friday sundown and Saturday sundown, that's holy unto the Most High. It's His Sabbath day. It's His day of rest. That's what He ordained from the beginning, all the way back in Genesis. So in other words, the Sabbath day is a day that we're not supposed to be working on. There's exceptions that we'll get, on, get into a little bit later in the, um, the video, but as a general understanding, the Sabbath day is a day that we're not supposed to be working on. Whosoever doeth any work in the Sabbath day, he shall surely be put to death. So the judgment is whoever gets caught doing any type of work, that soul shall be put to death. If you were caught, this is the judgment, was, this is the judgment that was ordained by the Most High when we had our kingdom. The children of Israel had a kingdom set up and we had our own laws that governed ourselves. This was the judgment. Whoever was caught doing work was put to death. Of course, we can't do that today because the world doesn't believe in keeping the Sabbath. The world believes in keeping Sunday. So this is not a punishment today, but in the kingdom to come, which the ch uh, children of Israel will be rulers over the 12,000 from each tribe, this will be the penalty for those breaking the Sabbath. Exodus 20 verse 10. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gate. So the Most High says again, six days you have to do all your work, but the seventh day everything shuts down. He says you couldn't put your sons and your daughters to work. You can't have them in today's time, that meaning you wouldn't be able to have them go outside and go, go mow the lawn. You can't have them do that, or you can't tell them, go out and go pick up all this trash out there in the lawn. That's what the Most High is saying. The sons and daughters, they have the day off of rest. Um, it also says the manservants and the maidservants, those that are working for you. So if, you're in a, if you own a business, all your employees have the Sabbath day off. That's what the Most High instituted. You can't just pick the Sabbath day off for yourself and say, you know what, I'm gonna put everyone else to work. They all have to work though and make money for me. No, the Most High says they get that day off as well. They get that day off as well. And also the cattle. People own cattle, they use cattle and, and horses and various other types of cattle to go and, uh, and, and harbor, I mean, um, to go and tote freight uh, places or to go and uh, carry wood or to do any other type of labor intensive work. You had to leave the cattle alone for that day as well. They got a day off. And the strangers back then that were working for us, 
for the children of Israel, they also had that day off as well. Everyone who lived in the land of Israel had the Sabbath day off. That was what the law that was instituted um, by the Most High. So that's how we're supposed to practice it. Of course, there's um, exceptions to it, which we will get into later on. But as a general understanding, that's what you're supposed to do. Everyone has the day off. You don't put anyone to work. For in six days, the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Exodus 16, verse 23. And he said unto them, this is that which the Lord have said. Tomorrow is the rest of the Holy Sabbath unto the Lord. Bake that which ye will bake today, and see that ye will seethe, and that which remaineth over lay up for you to keep until the morning. So the Most High says, Bake what you will bake today. This is the day prior to the Sabbath day which in today's term would be the uh, Friday before the evening. Bake what you're going to bake today and see. That means the boil. Boil or cook whatever you're going to cook today. Because the next day is the Sabbath of rest. So what is this telling you? That you're not supposed to be cooking food on the Sabbath day. The Sabbath day is a day that you're not supposed to be cooking food. Why? Because that's a type of, that's a form of work. That the Most High doesn't want uh, the, uh, he doesn't want his followers to be doing. So that day, you're supposed to cook up everything you're going to cook up the day prior. And then the next day, which is the Sabbath day, that's when you just eat everything that you've already cooked and baked. Nehemiah 13, verse 15. In those days saw I in Judah some treading the rime presses on the Sabbath and bringing in sheaves and lading asses as also wine, grapes, and figs, and all manner of burdens which they brought into Jerusalem on the Sabbath day. And I testified against them in the day wherein they sold victuals. So this is Nehemiah seeing Gentiles coming to exploit the children of Israel on the Sabbath day, coming to make money off the children of Israel on the Sabbath day. And the Gentiles knew back then that the Sabbath day was a holy day unto the children of Israel and a holy day to the Most High. Just like they know today, they were coming, trying to set up shop in Jerusalem, and Nehemiah was there, and this is what's gonna happen next. There dwelt men of Tyre also therein, which brought fish and all manner of ware, and sold on the Sabbath unto the children of Judah and in Jerusalem. So the people from Tyre, and there was other Gentiles amongst them, came with fish, all type of other goods, of food and were selling to the children of Israel. They were selling to the children of Israel on that day. The same way that they set up shop on the Sabbath day, the stores, 24 hour stores in the neighborhoods of the children of Israel, they were doing the same thing back then. Nothing has changed. They came and set up shop on the Sabbath day, came from far countries all the way to Jerusalem to come set up to, to, to um, make money off the children of Israel, which they knew they weren't supposed to be doing. Then I contended with the nobles of Judah and said unto them, What evil thing is this that ye do and profane the Sabbath day? Did not your fathers thus? And did not our God bring all this evil upon us and upon this city? Yet ye bring more wrath upon Israel by profaning the Sabbath. Nehemiah is telling, talking to the, the um, nobles or the leaders of Judah. And he's asking them, what are you doing? Letting these people come in here and sell and profane the Sabbath day, letting you know that buying and selling is something that is prohibited on the Sabbath day. We're not supposed to be buying and selling things on the Sabbath day. So this is Nehemiah contending with all of the leaders and asking them, what are you doing? You're profaning the Sabbath. Don't you already, don't you know what just happened? And the evil that the Most High brought to the children of Israel because we were profaning the Sabbath in times past. Because at this time we had just came back into the land and we were getting the land built up again. And Nehemiah's like, what, don't you get the hint on the Most High just had us in slavery? And now you're doing the same thing that just that got us put in slavery. And now you're profaning the Sabbath, continuing the cycle. And it came to pass that when the gates of Jerusalem began to dark before the Sabbath, 
I commanded that the gates should be shut and charged that they should not be opened till after the Sabbath. And some of my servants set I at the gates that there should no burden be brought in on the Sabbath day. So Nehemiah came up with a plan. He says the gate coming into Jerusalem, I'm gonna have that shut so these Gentiles and other people don't come in here selling foods uh, and, and other goods to the children of Israel. So his plan that he devised was to close the gate so no one can enter into the city. So the merchants and sellers of all kind of ware lodge without Jerusalem once or twice. So the Gentiles were coming with the gate closed, waiting outside of the gate. They did this one or two times, waiting outside the gate. Obviously we were spending a lot of money for them to sit outside and waste time and money trying to find a way to get into the city. They looking over the gate, trying to find little holes to get in, trying to get the children of Israel to spend money because we did the same thing back then. We spent money the same way you get money today. You get your check on Friday, Saturday, the whole check is gone. The money was that good that the Gentiles came and needed to get a piece of that action. They needed to come and get that money. Obviously the money was that good if they stood outside the gate waiting to get the children of Israel to purchase the good. Obviously we were spending money the same way we spend today. Get, can't keep a dollar for, 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 for 10 seconds. The dollar's gone. You, and you ask any of the people who own the 7-Elevens or any, own any mom and pop restaurant in a, a neighborhood that's um, filled with the children of Israel, they all tell you that the so-called black people, we all spend money like crazy. They, they know that we spend money. We spend money with everyone else and we don't keep it amongst ourselves, but we'll spend money quick. So the Gentiles, they knew the same thing back then. That money was good. So they're gonna, it was worth waiting outside the gate. Then I testified against them and said unto them, why lodge ye about the wall? If ye do so again, I will lay hands on you. Nehemiah said, what are you sitting here waiting outside the gate for? You're not about to come in here and find a hole to get in here and have the children of Israel buy your, um, buy your food. What are you doing? He says, if you do this one more time, I'm going to lay hands on you. Letting you know, a sidebar, letting you know that the prophets wasn't some marshmallow guys, some soft guys like they want to try to depict today in the movies. Like he was walking around, Lord thy God, help us. That's not what the prophets was. The prophets was regular dudes go going on back then. They were regular guys. Regular grown men. There wasn't some soft guys. Nehemiah says, if you do this one more time, I'm going to lay hands on you. Meaning somebody, you come in here, one of us going to have to go. We're going to have to get busy. We're going to have to get busy. Somebody going to have to go, man. Somebody going to have to leave with black eyes, uh, bruised ribs. Some, something going to happen if you come in here again. He, and another side note, we talk the same way as we talked back then, we talk today. We say the same thing about laying hands on people. Like somebody about to get into a fight. We say, if this man touch me one more time, I'm gonna lay hands on him. We talk the same exact way. The same slang is in the Bible. But back on track, Nehemiah says that he's gonna lay hands on these people if they keep coming around the gate, trying to sell to the children of Israel and have us profane the Sabbath day. Because Nehemiah understood the curses written in Deuteronomy 28, that we would go right back into slavery if we keep profaning the Sabbath day, which, which eventually what we did, which is why we ended up in America, all the islands, um, Europe, and all around the, uh, the world from profaning the Sabbath and worshiping other gods. From that time forth came they no more on the Sabbath. Obviously they knew Nehemiah was something serious because after he told them he would lay hands on them, they didn't come back around trying to sell their goods. They knew that if they came back over there again, they knew they was gonna to have to get down and they had to weigh their options. Is it worth it? I know this guy Nehemiah is something serious. He and him and the rest of his servants, I know they something serious. So we gotta weigh the options. Is it worth going back over there and getting busy and getting down? Cause Nehemiah wasn't playing no games, man. Nehemiah said, you come over here again, he laying hands on you. They was going to have food flying up, tables flying everywhere, and Nehemiah wasn't playing. Apples flying all in the air. That's what was, Nehemiah was serious, and they knew that. So they didn't come anymore around the city once he told them that. 
Isaiah 58, verse 13. If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy of the Lord, honorable, and shalt honor him, not doing thine own ways, nor finding thine own pleasure, nor speaking thine own words. So the Most High says that we're not supposed to be doing our own pleasures and finding our own ways on the Sabbath day. So whatever it is that is your pleasure, you have six days to do that. The Most High wants his attention, your attention to be on him on the Sabbath day. It's supposed to be a day of learning and a day of worshiping the Most High and a day of just resting, resting your mind. So all of your pleasures that you like to do, watching your, um, your NFL sports or your NBA basketball, any, any type of pleasure that you, that you do throughout the week, he says to put that aside for that day. So there's, I mean, that, this is subjective, so you have to decide what your pleasures are. I can't tell you all your pleasures. I, don't, I can't tell you that. I can only tell, talk for myself on what the pleasures are for myself. That's something subjective, so you're going to have to find out what your pleasures are, and then you're going to have to say, you know, I'm going to put that to the side for the Sabbath day for the Most High, and I'm going to rest. Then thou shalt delight thyself in the Lord, and I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth, and feed thee with the heritage of Jacob thy father, for the mouth of the Lord have spoken it. The Most High says, if you do this, then he's going to feed us with the heritage of Jacob, all the blessings that the Most High promised in Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, all the blessings that he promised will come to pass if we keep the Sabbath day. If we keep the Sabbath day, that's the beginning. That's the first thing that you need to, that people that come back to the truth need to understand and need to, need to practice is the Sabbath day. The Most High says that's when he'll begin to pour out the blessings. Matthew 12, verse 1. At that time, Jesus went on the Sabbath day through the corn, and his disciples were in hunger, and began to pluck the ears of corn and to eat. So the, this is Christ, Yahawashai, who you call Jesus Christ. He was going through with his disciples on the Sabbath day. Remember in the law, this is where we get into the exceptions. It says that there shall no work be done on the Sabbath day. So according to the, the law, Christ right now is doing work. But I told you that there was exceptions, which is what the Messiah is about to uh, uh, show us. He's about to give us the, um, the understanding on keeping the Sabbath day. So he's going through with the disciples and they're plucking the ears of the corn because they're hungry right now. So keep that in mind. But when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto him, Behold, thy disciples do that which is not lawful to do upon the Sabbath day. And the, the Pharisees was like, look, that's what the Pharisees were doing. They was quick to point it out. The Pharisees were the ones that were the, uh, what you would call the authoritative source over the law dur during this time. So they were dictating what was lawful and what was unlawful as we're gonna keep uh, reading and, and, uh, un and get the understanding on. So they were like, look, your disciples are doing something that's unlawful to do on the Sabbath day. They're doing work. They're picking corn. And that's unlawful. Why are they doing that? That's what the Pharisees want to know because they were looking, they were just wanted to accuse the Messiah anyway. They wanted to accuse him. So this is, they found the smallest thing that they can find to point out. But watch how the Messiah dealt with it. But he said unto them, have ye not read what David did when he was in hunger and they that were with him? How he entered into the house of God and did eat the shoe bread, which was not lawful for him to eat, neither for them which were with him, but only for the priest. So Christ is saying, don't you remember that David was, went into the, um, went into the priest and ate the shoe bread, which was not lawful for him to eat because the law says that the shoe bread is only for the priest to eat. David is not a priest. The priests come from the tribe of Levi. David was from the tribe of Judah. It was unlawful for him to eat it, but David was starving at that time. And the priests knew that, okay, I don't have any other common bread, but I do have the show bread. And he gave, the priest gave David the, um, the, um, the show bread. And it was not unlawful for him to do that because of the circumstance that David was in. There was no other food around. So 
common sense tells you if there's no other food around, even though the law says it's only for the priests, common sense and loving thy neighbor as thyself trumps that. So you give him the showbread. That's what you have. That's what Christ is breaking down. Sometimes um, human life and loving thy neighbor as thyself, sometimes that's going to trump what the written law says. That's what he's explaining to him right now. Or have ye not read in the law how that on the Sabbath days the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath and are blameless? Now he's bringing them back to the law again. He says, have you not read that the priest on the Sabbath day profane the Sabbath? Because the priest, remember it says, you shall not do any work on the Sabbath day. The priest's job is to work on the Sabbath day. They had to go in and do burnt offerings, sacrifices, sin offerings. Their job was to, 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 um, to operate on the Sabbath day. So he's like, he's like what, what do you not understand? Don't you understand that they profane the Sabbath and they're blameless? Because remember I told you that there are exceptions. Sometimes you have to work on the Sabbath day depending on the circumstance. That's what Christ is breaking down. Depending on the circumstance, sometimes you have to do things that would be classified as work. The priests did this and were blameless. The law says no work. It didn't say, it says seven days shall thou work. It didn't say except the priest. The law says, it was talking to the children of Israel across the board. So Christ is giving them the understanding right now, which they should already have because they're supposed to be masters in the law. But Christ is breaking it down. But I say unto you that in this place is one greater than the temple. But if ye had known what this meaneth, I will have mercy and not sacrifice. Ye would not have condemned the guiltless because the most high is going to have mercy in certain situations. He's going to have mercy depending on the circumstance. Like if they're starving, like Christ was giving the example and they're picking corn so they can eat. Or like David, when he was hungry and it was unlawful for him to take the showbread, he was able to get, the priest gave him the showbread. The Most High is going to have mercy in those situations. The Most High is going to have mercy. He's a merciful God. He's not some robot up in the sky. For the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath day. And when he was departed thence, he went into their synagogue. And behold, there was a man which had his hand withered. And they asked him, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath days that they might accuse him? So Christ went into the synagogue and saw a man with his hand withered. He had a handicapped hand. And they, the, the Pharisees asked uh, the Messiah, Is it lawful for you to heal somebody on the Sabbath day? Because they were trying to trip him up and find a way to condemn him. Is it lawful? to heal somebody on the Sabbath day. Because remember the law says, you shall not do any work. That's what the law says, any work. That's, so somebody without any understanding is gonna try to hold you to that, which is what the Pharisees was doing. They was trying to hold him to not doing any work on the Sabbath day. Even though the Pharisees did work on the Sabbath day, but they were trying to hold him so they can condemn him. Now watch how he dealt with it. And he said unto them, what man shall there be among you that shall have one sheep, and if it fall into a pit on the Sabbath day, will he not lay hold on it and lift it out? And so he turns it and flips the script on them and says, well, which one of you is going to see your sheep fall into the ditch? And just because of the Sabbath day, you're going to sit there and let him, uh, let him be tortured by not being able to get out the ditch. Remember back then, the sheep and cattle, that's people's money maker. So it's like, which one are you going to let your, let your money stay in a ditch and, and, and run the risk of it dying? And sheep, they're herd animals. So when the sheep is in a ditch, it's going to be sitting there yelling. It's, it's going to be suffering. It's going to be sitting there yelling because it's by itself. And it's going to be suffering. So it says, which one of you are going to sit there and watch the sheep do that? Which one of you Pharisees? Which one of you Pharisees are going to do that? Not one of the Pharisees is going to do that because they know that that's their money maker. They're going to go grab about three, four other people and go and lift that sheep out of the ditch. They knew that they were going to do that. And they sit here asking him about healing some man on the Sabbath day, knowing that they would go and do some type of work on the Sabbath day. If the occasion 
uh, was um, what fit the um, fit the script. If it was need be in a certain occasion, they were going to go ahead and do work on the Sabbath day. Just like if you found if your kid fell and hurt his hurt his or her knee, you're going to go bandage the kid up. You're not going to sit there and say it's the Sabbath day, so I'm going to sit there and let you bleed out. This is what this is the understanding that Christ had to bring to the Pharisees, which they the Pharisees are supposed to be these masters of the law in Old Testament. They should be able to know this, but they're so busy trying to condemn and oppress people. He had to break it down to him. How much then is a man better than a sheep? How much more is helping a person better than helping one of them sheep that you would have grabbed about 10, 11 people to go grab out of the ditch? Do I really have to break that down to you is what he's saying? That a person is more valuable than a sheep? That if the man is suffering and he's in pain, I, that I, it shouldn't be no problem with me healing that person, whether it be the Sabbath day or any other day, it shouldn't be a problem. I shouldn't be getting harassed, especially when you're the same person that would go pull up a sheep out of the ditch. So there are exceptions to keeping the Sabbath day is what Christ is showing people. Man is not supposed to be a slave to the Sabbath day is what he's saying. Because in, in, in the scripture in Mark, he says that the Sabbath was made for man. Man was not made for the Sabbath. So you're not a slave to the Sabbath. There are some exceptions is what he's telling you. And that's for the viewers out there as well. There are exceptions to the Sabbath day. You're not going to sit there and uh, 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 you're not going to sit there and watch somebody's health be jeopardized. And you're going to sit there and sit back because you're going to say, you know, what? it's the Sabbath day. I'm not supposed to do any work. That is that's unlawful. That's unlawful to do that. Wherefore, it is lawful to do well on the Sabbath day. So the conclusion is, it is lawful to do well on the Sabbath day. It's lawful to do well on the Sabbath day. There's many examples that you know one can give that is that someone could do well on the Sabbath day. It would technically be work, but it is still lawful to do well on the Sabbath day. Like for example, if you see somebody, if you see a woman with three children, three young children, uh, get a flat tire on the side of the road and she doesn't know how to, and it's the Sabbath day and she don't know how to change the flat tire and she got three kids. It's the heat of the summer in Florida or, or in Nevada. It's lawful for you to go and help that woman. If you know how to change a tire, it's lawful for you to go and help change that tire. There's nothing wrong with doing that. Same thing. If you're a doctor and you see somebody, you know, uh, uh, get a, a severe cut in their arm or anything, and you, you, you still happen to be a surgeon, and you know how to fix that, it is lawful for you to do that on the Sabbath day. It's lawful to do that on the Sabbath day. You have to use wisdom. That's the principal thing. You have to use wisdom and you have to be sincere. Like there's some people that, you know, you have jobs and you have to work on the Sabbath day. Because, you know, during this captivity, people, America and all the rest of the societies don't believe in the Sabbath day. So, it, it, you know, it's a lot of circumstances where people come into the knowledge and they, and they work on the Sabbath day. So you have to use wisdom. The Most High is going to have mercy. But you have to be sincere, number one. And you have to be active. So if you're one of them people who work on the Sabbath day, you have to be active, proactive and trying to talk to your boss, tell them your views or, you know, that you don't, that you want to keep the Sabbath days. And, you know, eventually if they can work you into the schedule, then you may be able to, you know, it may take a little time, but you may be able to get the Sabbath day off. Or if not, then you got to use wisdom again. You have to, you know, you don't try it for a few months or whatever or whatnot and they just won't give you the Sabbath day, now you have to be proactive again. You have to say, okay, you know what, I'm gonna have to start looking for another job. But that don't mean quit your job though. You know, if you're, especially if you're someone who's, you know, uh, middle class and lower class and you need, you, you got a family to feed, you know, it, it's not, it wouldn't be wise for someone to just up and just quit their job. You gotta use wisdom in certain situations. And the Most High is gonna have mercy. So you wouldn't just quit your job, but you would be active trying to, you know, get your job now to, you know, cater to that Sabbath day need. And if that don't work out, then you start actively looking for another job that's going to allow you to keep the Sabbath day. You know, because you don't you want to be proactive. You don't want to get caught and get comfortable and not keeping the Sabbath day. You don't want to get caught in that sin. And then, you know, then, then judgment gets put on you. 
You don't want you don't want that to happen. So you just have to be active with prayer and fasting and be sincere and the most high will eventually open that gateway up for you. There's a lot of brothers in the truth that have to work on the Sabbath day. But they pray and you know and and, and whatever they can get whenever they can get that Sabbath day off, they get it and they worship on the on the um on the Sabbath day. You know, it's just, it's just the price that comes with the hundreds and, uh, uh, and thousands of years of not worshiping the Most High the way he told us. Now we're stuck in his last captivity, in his last situation, and now it's almost impossible to get the Sabbath day off because the America, I'm specifically talking about America, they've designed it where Friday and Saturday, that's the money-making days. Those are the money-making days. Friday and Saturday is when everybody's busy. So they've designed it that way so now you, they need more employers or employees to work on those days to fulfill that, um, that, that supply and demand. So everything is working against you in today's society on trying to get the Sabbath day off. And then come Sunday, the streets are quiet. You can hear birds chirping. You can hear crickets, you know, making noises. You can hear all type of things, man. Snakes slithering in the grass. It's so quiet on, the, on, on Sunday because they done took that day and made the day of rest to be Sunday, which is Satan's day or worshiping of the sun. So it's hard in this captivity to, you know, to, to exercise the Sabbath. And then there's still some professions where you may be needed on the Sabbath day. Like for instance, if you're, if you're um, some type of specialty surgeon or specialty doctor, and maybe you might be the only one at your job that knows how to perform this certain surgery. And it just so happened to be on the Sabbath day where somebody comes in and needs that life or death, you know, surgery. You might have to do that. It's lawful to do well on the Sabbath day. That's the whole point behind it. You keep the Sabbath day. The, the Sabbath day is a day of rest. So you take that rest as much as possible. That day of rest and a day of worship. You take that rest. But other than that, I mean, if something pops up, like friends, I give an example for myself. I give a perfect example for myself where, you know, you might have, I had to uh, um, go do, do work, what you would call. Well, well, I give an example right now. I'm doing work. It's the Sabbath day right now. And technically I'm doing work by making this video. This is work. It takes work to do this. I don't just sit back and cross my fingers and all of a sudden the videos get made. It's a Sabbath day right now and I'm doing work, but it's a good deed that I'm doing and it's not something that's just benefiting myself. It's something that's benefiting the people. It's something that's benefiting the people. So it's lawful for me to do this work right now on the Sabbath day. There's many brothers that teach the word on the Sabbath day. It's lawful to do that type of work. And, and a, another example I have on, on my um, farm, I have sheep. The last five sheep that had babies, they all had babies on the Sabbath day. Every single last one of them had babies on the Sabbath day or a high holy day. Each one of them. And when you have newborn sheep, you have to go out there and the, the, somebody who's a farmer, you would go out there and, and the nipples of the, the, the mother sheep, you have to squeeze it. To, make, to ensure that the, the milk is coming out. Because a lot of times, the newborn babies, they don't have enough power in their jaws to suck and, 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 and break the air pocket that's in the nipple. So you have to break it for them. Otherwise, it'll look like they're sucking on the nipple, but the, no milk is coming out because their jaw is not strong enough. So you have to ensure that the, um, the, the nipple is producing milk and the baby is able to consume that milk. But that's work though. It's work. Is it unlawful? No, it's not unlawful. It's not something that I just plan. Like, let me wait to the Sabbath day to have to make the baby, you know, be born from the sheep. No, that's just the way it happens. That's just the way it happens. The Most High is going to have mercy. He'd rather have mercy. He's going to have mercy over sacrifice. So we have to use wisdom when it comes to keeping the Sabbath day. But in conclusion, a Sabbath day is a day of rest, a day of no work, a holy convocation where you get together with believers and you go over the scriptures and it's a day that you worship the most high no buying and selling you don't do your own pleasures you know you try to keep it holy to the best of your ability and may the most high bless you those that come back and keep the sabbath day isaiah 56 verse 2 blessed is the man that doeth this and the son of man that layeth hold on it that 
keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it, and keepeth his hand from doing any evil. You want to be blessed? According to the Bible, the Most High just told you how to be blessed. Blessed is the man that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it. Not Sunday worship. Blessed is the man that keepeth the Sabbath. You want blessings? Spiritual blessings? The Most High says blessed is that man that keeps the Sabbath. That man or woman that keeps the Sabbath day. Keeps the Sabbath day holy from polluting it. Not following the ways of Satan and the rest of the world who want to push Sunday worship on you. Blessed is the man and woman who keeps the Sabbath day. That's what the Bible says. That's what the Bible says. So now we've got a, I hope that you've got a clear understanding on, you know, the general functions on how to keep the Sabbath day. And I hope that you've been edified and that now you're able to, to the best of your ability, you know, come and worship the Most High on His Holy Sabbath day. That you may be blessed, as the scriptures say, and that you may one day inherit the kingdom of God. Because keeping the Sabbath day is something that you're going to deal with for a long time. Forever is what the scriptures say. Forever we're going to be keeping the Sabbath day. So now you rehearse those righteous acts in pre preparation for the kingdom. Because that's what we're all doing now. We all want to make it to the kingdom. So now we're rehearsing the righteous acts that's going to be implemented in the kingdom. They're going to govern the kingdom. The same way they got rules that govern all the rest of society, the laws in the Bible is what's going to govern the kingdom of heaven. We're not going to be living in some lawless society like people want to make you think. There's going to be rules and guidelines that govern the kingdom of heaven. It just so happened to be that the first five books written in the Bible are is what going to be those laws that govern the kingdom. So we need to come back, keep the Sabbath day. That's the first covenant that... Well, not the first covenant. That's probably the most important covenant that people coming into this truth need to establish when you come back to the Most High. Is keeping the Sabbath. Learning how to keep the Sabbath. And with that, brothers and sisters, I say, until next time, Shalom.